So here comes another viewer request. It was for Leberknödel, which can be translated to liver dumplings. And these liver dumplings are served in a clear broth. Um, they are a kind of pre-dish before you have your main course. So let me quickly run you through the ingredients. I have about 500 gram of liver. This is a beef liver. You can also use the liver of uh, a pig. Um, I have some parsley fresh from the garden. I have some majoran. You can usually use the dried one that you can buy at the store, but I happen to have it in my garden, so I use some fresh majoran. I have a little bit of um, nutmeg, which is optional, some salt an egg. I have uh, diced and fried an onion, some pepper and I have two and a little more rolls which um, I might need all or maybe not. I also have some breadcrumbs just in case that my dumpling dough is a little bit too, too um, wet. So I also have some milk here. The amounts for this recipe vary basically because it all depends on you know how much of the the bread is uh, how, how dry your bread is how much of the milk it will soak in and um, the liver I know you get what you get sometimes so this was packed and I didn't have to choose how much of the liver I want so um, I have 500 gram if you have 700 gram it works just as well you just have to adjust your your ingredients a little bit you have to work with with the um, consistency of of the dough that you have for your dumplings and um, just try to, to even things out with the right amount of liquid and the right amount of, of dry ingredients. So I start with using the rolls and I cut these rolls into some sort of cubes. You might have watched my dumpling video for the regular dumplings from rolls and basically very similar to what I did there and I will let these cubes soak in the milk a little bit so I can later add them to the liver. one of these kitchen aid or similar machines that um, can cut it all into smaller pieces. I would recommend that you make these cubes a little smaller or you soak the breads in whole and then mash them into smaller pieces. Okay, so I put this in here into my big bowl and here's the warm milk and I pour some of it over here, not all at once, because I want to be really careful. I don't want it to be too wet. And I can always add more milk, but it's difficult to add more dry ingredients since they are limited here. I, I mean, I still have a little bit here, but um, I hope that I don't need that. So yeah, that looks good. And I set this aside and I quickly clean my hand and then I will take care of the liver. All right, so for the liver, I want to show you, before I put it into the machine, I want to show you how you do this if you don't have one of these machines. So if you want to have your liver um, in small pieces for this recipe, you have to just cut it like this and that kind of mashes it. So that's how you can, some just go like this, works too. So just like scratch it. And if you have a whole liver, um, you might have to remove the skin and stuff like that. This happens to be already very well prepared. So I could go on like this, you see it's very finely mashed if I do it like this 
but since I have one of these machines and I don't want to bore you to death while I'm cutting my liver, um, I will just cut them into pieces that will fit into the kitchen aid and then just use that. So, I put this in here. And I will give it a quick run in this machine before I continue. quite mushy. Um, I think I have to, yeah, I have to wait a little longer with the bread um, cubes, so um, I'll give it a few more minutes to soak and then I will continue with this video and add everything else. So now let's put this all together. I use all the bread that I have soaked. And by the way, if you don't, <coughs> if you don't have um, rolls, you can also use some toast bread that works as well. And you can, I hope you can see that the, the rolls are not really very wet. And that's okay because the liver is quite wet. And uh, I also, since I add an egg that is additional to everything in there. And I don't need to cut my herbs because of this machine, which is very practical. I add a little bit of nutmeg. I really like nutmeg. You don't have to use it. It's optional. Um, just give it a little bit. And I like I like it when nutmeg is fresh. I don't really like the one that comes, you know, already ground. Um, I think this one has a lot more taste. So here comes the onions. And the salt. Not don't want to be too shy on salt, but I don't also want to overdo it since it's gonna cook later in some salt water. This will also add some salt to it. Here comes some pepper. And the majoran actually is really crucial to the taste. It's, it's one of the main ingredients. You can use more majoran than I have used here. Um, I just planted my majoran and it, I wanted to thrive, so I didn't want to cut too, too much away from it. So that's why I kept it a little bit low this time. Okay, so I'm gonna mix this all together and then we'll see what's next. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's very, very fluid. It's, it won't be possible to shape this in any way. That's what um, happens. It will be probably better if you mix it by hand, um, but uh, yeah, so there are different ways to do this. I will add just some breadcrumbs Quite a bit. Let's see if that's enough. And they're plain breadcrumbs, no herbs or anything added to it. All right, I think it looks good. So it's still not not possible to make or shape really something with it, but that's okay because it goes into the fridge now, and it will be possible later. Okay. This will go into the fridge for one hour now and then I will shape the dumplings. Okay, so this has been in the fridge for an hour and I checked in between. It is now a lot more dense and shapeable, so I will start making the dumplings now. I brought a pot of salt water to a boil and it's just boiling slightly, not too much. And now I use two spoons to shape the dumplings. You can also do it with your hands if you want. Do it like this. 
And don't make them too large because they will become larger once they're in the water. So here we go, number one. And I continue to doing this with all of my dough. And you might find different recipes for these. I found one that has 15 eggs. That's outrageous. Um, my grandmother made this as a soup for us when we came to visit her in Bavaria and I never watched her making them so she probably made them slightly different and I'm pretty sure she made them all by hand not with a machine and hers were like not as smooth as these here so if you make them with your hands or with your just in a bowl without a machine they might turn out more rough but that's okay that's not a problem so they go all in here and you see they sink to the bottom of my pot and after a while you can see it with this one here right now they come to the surface and once they are at the surface they are supposed to be there for like 10 minutes and then I take them off. Okay, so they have been in here for quite a while. I should have turned them in between a little more often. You see here, you can see it a little bit, or let me show you another one. So they turn a little bit dark on the top if they are not turned in between, but that's that's okay. That's just, you know, just opticals. Um, I want to take one out and see if they are all cooked through. So I take this one and see, yeah, so this is maybe a little bit red still here, maybe this one needs a little longer, but they are basically, yeah, I would say they are, they are ready. Um, let me cut this one more time. Oh, this one's really good. So now it's time to serve them and I serve them in a, in a beef broth. Yeah, and so here's the broth that I've prepared and you can put some vegetables in that broth too that's something that I like to do and then you just add like usually it's like three of these dumplings and let's put some decorations on top Just like that. And if you like this video, I would be happy if you give me a thumbs up and follow this channel. Thank you for watching and I hope you like this recipe.